All right, so because I grew up in California and did medical school in Florida, I'm always asked why I wanted to come to Minnesota for radiology residency. So I figured I'd make a video about what to look for in a radiology program and some of the factors that I considered when ranking them. There is no perfect program for everyone. There's no one size fits all, but I do think that there are some crucial factors to consider when you're thinking about where you want to train. Dr. Cellini also made a video about this topic, so definitely check that out. And I hope this helps those of you who are third or fourth year med students who are applying to radiology or those of you who are currently on the interview trail. Now, you probably have a pretty good idea about which cities you want to live in so that's kind of a given i'm going to skip over whether or not a program has esir or early specialization in interventional radiology because that's also a pretty straightforward consideration for those of you who are interested in ir i'm also not going to talk about fellowships because almost everyone does a fellowship and generally speaking they aren't as difficult to land compared to a residency spot so with that said let's jump into things probably the first decision to make is to figure out if you want to go to a large academic university program or a smaller community program because this distinction alone will help you narrow down a lot of choices. I personally felt that the university programs had more funding, more resources for teaching, higher quality rotations, more opportunities for research, and more scheduling flexibility since the class sizes tended to be larger. But with that comes more bureaucracy and it's not like everyone wants to go to an academic program or become an academic radiologist. So I think the first step is just to decide whether you want to prioritize more academically oriented programs or community programs. The next step is to look for a primarily resident run program as opposed to one that has a lot of fellows or is primarily driven by attendings. The reason for this is because you want to get as much real world and hands-on experience as possible but if there's lots of fellows around or if the attendings do all the work then you don't really get that experience. You want to be well trained and hit the ground running when you start your first job instead of having difficulty getting through a lot of cases and feeling uncomfortable as a new attending. In resident run programs, typically the chief residents make the annual rotation schedule, the call schedule, they handle vacation and sick day requests, and generally they give input about any changes that should be made to the program. So in my opinion, I think a resident run program basically gives you better training. The next factors to consider are volume and pathology. I would look to see if they have at least a cancer center, a transplant center, and a level one trauma center, so that way you're exposed to lots of complex patients and rare diagnoses. I would also look to see if they have a pediatric hospital because sometimes hospitals have a hard time getting dedicated pediatric radiology rotations for their residents. When you're interviewing, I would ask where the rotations are primarily held at. Are they mostly at the university medical center, at the county hospital, at a private community hospital, Hospital, the VA? Are they at outpatient imaging centers? Are they at a mix of all of those things? So those are some of the things that you want to think about. During residency, you want to see as many cases as possible in very diverse clinical settings so that way you're comfortable practicing radiology when you're done. Plus, I think it's better to be at a high volume program where you learn by doing rather than having low volumes and having to mostly learn from a book. After all, you can't do residency all over again once you've started. Now, you may have heard about the notoriously difficult core exam, which is kind of like the radiology driving test that we take at the end of our fourth year of residency. And I think a program's pass rate for the core exam is also important to consider, especially when you think about the national pass rate for the exam being somewhere around 87%. I just feel like it makes sense to go to a program that has a long history of high core exam pass rates because number one, it's an indirect indication of the quality of the training. And number two, you don't wanna be spinning your wheels, stressing out, having to take the exam a second time. I would ask about how much time off residents get to study because you not only want to have the resources, but you also want to have the time to be well prepared for the exam. And you don't really want to be taking a bunch of overnight call weeks leading up to your exam. Another super important factor to think about is if the program has truly independent call for residents, meaning will you be the go-to radiologist in the hospital making the decisions, or will you be mostly answering the phone while the attending makes most of the decisions on a call shift? Independent call means that the emergency department will be using your report and not waiting for an overread from your attending. Simply considering a challenging diagnosis is obviously very different from actually having to put it out there on a report that pretty much every doctor sees. So having independent call shifts makes you faster and more confident. Many people say that call is actually the meat of radiology residency because being in the hot seat forced to make clinically meaningful decisions to help patients is ultimately what helps you grow and learn as a radiologist. So I think how call is structured is super important and definitely something that you should consider. The last factor 
after I'll mention is moonlighting because who doesn't want to get paid for studying while babysitting a scanner? Contrast coverage gigs can make life a little bit easier, especially for those with kids, for those who live in an area with a high cost of living, or those with student loans. So I would definitely ask the residents about any moonlighting opportunities. Now, when I interviewed at the University of Minnesota, it was like my third or fourth interview of the season. And as I went on the rest of my interviews, I would always think back to how much I like the city, how strong the training was here, and how highly the residents spoke about the program. I just had this gut feeling of, oh wow, this program kind of has it all. They've got a cancer center, transplant, level one trauma, a pediatric hospital, rotations at both the county hospital and VA, independent call, 100% boards pass rates, high volume, moonlighting opportunities, research opportunities if you want to take advantage of that, ESIR if I decided to do interventional radiology. Plus, the city has really good food, a good coffee scene, lots of outdoor activities and things to do, and a solid airport to get out of town on the weekends and during the winter. Pretty much everything I could ask for. Basically, I knew that I wanted to go to a large academic university medical center with a resident-run program that was located in a metropolitan city where they had high high core exam pass rates, and a long history of training radiologists. And the University of Minnesota was exactly that. Of course, you may be optimizing for completely different factors, and that's totally cool. But I hope my mental framework is helpful for you when you end up ranking radiology programs. On that note, let me know in the comments below what you're gonna be prioritizing for radiology programs. I'd love to hear from you. Also, let me know if you want me to elaborate on pretty much anything I talked about in this video. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Instagram and TikTok, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.